Jansen and I'm at the Canadian Light Source in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. When I started university, I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to study science. Uh, so I ended up doing a master's degree in experimental particle physics at the University of Regina, which is also in Saskatchewan. And after that, I got my first job at the Canadian Light Source. I work at macromolecular crystallography beam lines. And so I do a lot of work with automation and software development, which I find really thrilling and, and fun. Um, but I also get to do a lot of things with my hands. I play with liquid nitrogen all day and it's, it's an interesting job. I'm never bored. And the part that's really inspiring is just seeing how these important experiments that are going on at the synchrotron can really help uh, improve things for everyone in our society. On my first day, all of my coworkers were involved in running our first annual macromolecular crystallography data collection school. So we had a bunch of students here that were all learning crystallography which was great for me because I needed to learn a lot as well. So everyone was a little busy and a lot as well. To sit in on lectures from world-class researchers and learn a lot that day. And now I'm in a position where I plan a lot of those schools and other events around the synchrotron. I would tell myself not to be too intimidated. Uh, it can be very overwhelming to walk into a room full of people who are really brilliant and it's only a matter of time in the light source community before you run into a world-class scientist uh, in your journeys. So just try to remember that they're all real people just like you and me and they all started somewhere. This is it for me. I have only worked at the Canadian Light Source but working at a light source has given me an opportunity to travel internationally, so I've had a chance to visit a number of synchrotrons in Europe, and I hope to visit many more before my synchrotron career is over. Even though I'm not doing all of this research personally, I love knowing that I can be a small part of someone else's really important work and be contributing to society in that way. So we have researchers that have studied all kinds of diseases on our beamline, uh, like tuberculosis, malaria, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, and of course COVID in the past year. And I love knowing that people who are really brilliant in our world are doing that work and I just want to support it however I can. The contacts between light sources are really important and everyone's very interested in sharing ideas. We're also really interested in innovating and in finding new ways to use the light source and finding new applications for old techniques. I think everyone at the light source would consider themselves an innovator. And one of the key things that drives us is to try to get data faster and better than it was before. So we pay attention to what's happening at other synchrotrons and try to improve on efficiencies that other people have found. Uh, but it's really important to upgrade our facilities and to keep trying to do better. Um, I think maybe it's a characteristic of all scientists that they're never satisfied with the, the status quo and we're always trying to push for the next big thing. I have two small children at home, so when I'm not working, I'm usually taking care of them. But I also really enjoy quilting. Even though I work in a math and science kind of a field, quilting is where I use all of my trigonometry. I'd also like to start learning macrame because I think there should be a way of tying the knots so that they look like a double helix. I also sing and I really enjoy music so I sing in the chorus when our local symphony does their uh, version of Handel's Messiah every year.